The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. <laughs> uh, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, we will be shortly starting in few minutes. So just let uh, the people are in queue of joining. So let's just let them join and then we'll start in two, three minutes. In just one minute. <laughs> Okay, so let's start uh, our session for today. <laughs> Okay, now, as you all know, <coughs> that uh, the trend <coughs> of uh, these particular classes is that we try to attempt as many past exam questions in these revision classes so that uh, our concepts are revised as well as uh, we are able to <coughs> solve the examination questions. Okay. Okay, so in the last uh, two classes, the first class uh, we covered uh, investment appraisal and did uh, two past exam questions of that particular topic. Then we did a portion of uh, weighted average cost of capital and then weighted average cost of capital also. We did uh, a complete refresher of the concepts of VAC as well as uh, after VAC, uh, we did one MTQ as well, okay? Now, today's agenda is that we will be covering our topic called sources of finance or commonly regarded as business finance. And in sources of finance or business finance, we will be again attempting two exam questions and uh, hopefully the exam question <laughs> which we will be doing 
from the past papers they will cover almost uh, many aspects of uh, business finance okay so the questions are in the same handout file which was downloaded by you yesterday you can also see this uh, handout section session dot doc if anyone hasn't downloaded the file yesterday he can download now and then we can start questions I'm opening the file. It's uh, the third question in this file called uh, Laforge Company. You can view the requirements from here as well, as well as we can see the question. It's uh, the question from March, July 2020 attempt. And uh, we will be doing the question from March, July 2020. You can see it on the screen as well and you have the file as well. Yes, uh, but here it is the same file as yesterday. So when I open the question, <coughs> March, July, 2020, as I've told you in the first class, there is again the instruction screen. You must carefully read these instructions while uh, doing your exams because you will get an idea how things work. <coughs> Okay. <coughs> now the question is, it's from March, June 2020. This scenario relates to six requirements. The scenario is relating to six requirements. Okay. Laforge company is a listed company which designs and manufactures air conditioning units. So it's a listed company that uh, designs and manufactures air conditioning units which are then sold through third party retailers and distributors so company is a listed company it is designing and manufacturing air conditioning units which are then sold through third party retailers and distributors economic growth in a number of asian countries has increased the demands for its products and laforge wishes to target these markets in order to generate sales and profit growth so economic growth in a number of Asian countries has increased the demand for its products and Laforge wishes to target these markets in order to generate sales and profit growth. To target these markets, Laforge needs new machinery, which will require investment of 25.48 million. Okay. Now coming to the point, the first paragraph was just introduction that Laforge is a listed company, it designs and manufactures air conditioning units, which are then sold to third party retailers, distributors. Economic growth in a number of Asian countries has increased the demand. Laforge wishes to target these markets in order to generate sales and profit. <coughs> to target these markets, Laforge needs new machinery. Obviously, if you want to target some new markets, you need investments. So Laforge needs new machinery, which will require investment of 25.48 million. Two options for raising the finance are being considered. Number one, a right issue at a discount of 30% to the current share price of 2.6 per share. The first financing option is that you need 25.48 million. A right issue at a discount of 30% to the current share price of 2.6 per share. And second, an issue of 6% loan notes redeemable at nominal value of 100 in 10 years time. So, company needs 
25.8 million two options one right issue and one six percent okay right issue at the 30 percent discount of the current share price of 2.6 per share right issue is a 30 percent discount <laughs> to the current share price of 2.6 per share that means right issue is that 30 percent less to the current share price of 2.6 per share that means right issue is at 1.82 per share okay or the company can raise it by six percent loan notes redeemable in 10 years time so it's through six percent loan notes you can raise 25.48 okay these are the two options under consideration Laforge's PE ratio is 11 times. This is expected to remain unchanged whichever financing option is chosen. Whatever option you choose, your PE ratio remains constant 11 times. Extracts from Laforge's <coughs> most recent financial statements are as follows. So I've been given extract from most recent financial statements. Profit from operations is 25.5 million. The PAT is 16.56 million. Share capital at 0.5 per share is 35 million. Without the new investment, the forecast profit from operations for the coming year is expected to be same as previous year's actual result. If the investment is undertaking, the forecast profit from operations is expected to increase by 4.5. Okay, so without the new investment, the forecast profit from operations is expected to be same. So if you don't invest, the forecast profit is expected to be <coughs> same. <laughs> If the investment is undertaking, the forecast profit from operations is expected to increase by 4.5 million. Tax rate is 20 percent. First recommend is a four marks. For the right issue, calculate the following: the theoretical extract price per share and value of right per existing share. Okay, the theoretical extract price per share and value of right per existing share. I can perform some workings here. So that's why I have uh, opened this page now. Please pay attention. Laforge is a listed company that designs and manufactures air conditioning units, which are then sold through third party retailers and distributors. Economic growth in a number of Asian countries has increased the demand for its products. Laforge wishes to target these markets in order to generate sales and profit growth. To target these markets, Laforge needs new machinery, which will require investment of 25.48 million. So you are now clear that in order to go into new markets, Laforge needs new machinery that requires investment of 25.48 million. Two options for raising finance are being considered. First, a right issue at a 30% discount of the current share price of 2.6 per share. That means right issue is at 30% less to the current share price of 1. Point, sorry, 2.6 per share. Right issue will be at 1.82 per share because right issues at 30 percent less to the current share price of 2.6 per share that means <coughs> right issues at 1.82 per share you can also check that if company is planning to raise 25.48 million if company is planning to raise 25.48 billion and right issues at 30 percent discount to the current share price of 2.6 it's at 1.82 per share company is planning to raise 25.48 million and it's issuing shares in right issue at 1.82 per share. 14 million shares will be issued. If you have gone through a question of a bar company, that's in the kit as well, as well, it's a past paper question. It's the same scenario. In that, it was written that. Uh, Company is planning to raise 90 million. <laughs> Company is planning to raise 90 million and it's issuing shares at six per share. So, there also it said 
<laughs> that if company is planning to raise 90 million and it will issue shares at dollar six per share that means 15 million shares will be issued so here also that uh, company plans to rate 25.848 million it has two options first option is right issue right issue is at a 30 percent discount of the current share price of 2.6 per share that means right issue is at 1.82 per share so if company plans to raise 25.48 million and it's issuing shares at 1.82 per share that means company will lead to issue 14 million shares the second option is an issue of 6% loan notes redeemable at nominal value of 100 in 10 years. So second option is loan note issue. It has two options to raise finance, equity and debt. Laforge's P ratio is 11 times. It is expected to remain unchanged, whichever option is chosen. Extracts from most recent financial statements is profit of corporations is 25.5 million. PAT is 16.56 million. Share capital is 0.5 per share, 35 million. So if 35 billion is the capital, and share capital power value is 0.5 that means company has 70 million shares 35 million is the capital 0.5 power value you can divide it number of shares are 70 million without the new investment the forecast profit from operations for the coming year is expected to be same as previous year if you don't invest anything no new investment the profits will remain same however if investment is undertaking the forecast profit is expected to increase by 4.5 so profit have to increase by 4.5. Laforge pays tax at 20%. So taxes, 20%. Okay. For the right issue, calculate the theoretical extra price per share and value of right per existing share. Now, every student knows how to calculate term. Every student knows how to calculate theoretical extra price per share. But in order to calculate theoretical extra price per share, in order to calculate theoretical extra price per share, a student always asks me that what is the ratio? Is it one for four? Is it one for five? Is it one for six? I am not provided anything in this question. Had I been provided the ratio? that right issues at one for five right issues at one for four one for three i would have easy calculated term but here it's not mentioned sometimes ratio will be mentioned one for four one for five sometimes it won't be mentioned so you need to pick on your own like check how many shares company currently has company has share capital 35 million capital 0.5 power value company currently has 70 million shares and then right issue 14 million shares will be issued <coughs> Because 25.48 million is being raised and right issue at 1.82 per share, 14 million shares will be issued. Company has 70 million shares and in right issue it is planning to issue 14 million shares. You can find out the ratio. It's one for five. It's one for five. Any questions with this one for five, then I will be moving towards the solution. Because you see, for example, company has 40 million shares and you plan to issue 10 million new shares in right issue. So 10 million out of 40 million you are issuing, it's one for four, right? Similarly, if 70 million are the shares and company plans to issue 14 million shares, it becomes one for five. Yes, Sephula, we are raising 25.48 million via right issue. <coughs> We are planning to raise 25.48 million via right issue. And we are issuing shares at 1.82 per share, 30% less than 2.6, 1.82 per share. So if you have 25.48 million to raise and you have to issue share at 1.82 per share, you can divide to get how many shares will be issued? 14 million shares will be issued. So I have done all the homework required for this question and now I should uh, move towards the requirements. I've done all the homework of this question and now I should move towards the requirements. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so the summary of the question is company was planning to raise how much 25.48 million? It had two options, right issue and loan note issue. In right issue, it was issuing shares at 30% less, 1.82 per share. So 25.48 million needs to be raised at 1.2, 14 million shares will be issued. Company currently has 70 million shares and it plans to issue 14 million shares. Its ratio becomes 1 for 5. And new investment will result in increase in profits. The first requirement is third term and the value of right per existing share. Let's start. Requirement A1. Calculate the theoretical X rise price per share. <laughs> Let's calculate the theoretical X rise price per share. The share issue is one for five. That means company one for five means it will have five shares at present. And each share is trading at dollar 2.6 per share. One for five means company currently has five shares. Each share is trading at 2.6 per share. 13. On this five shares, one share was issued. One for five. <laughs> one share was issued at a price of 30% less. 1.82 per share. This makes it 82. So after right issue, the thing is that company will have six shares, and the worth of this six shares will be total 14.82. Six shares will have a worth of 14.82. You can divide them to get the term. 14.82 divided by 6, 2.47. This is the theoretical x right price per share. You can also get this thing in total. Like you can say that company has existing 70 million shares. Each share is trading at dollar two point six per share okay so you can say 70 million shares multiply by 2.6 this is the old value and company issued 14 million shares at a value of how much 1.82 per share so 14 million shares were issued at 1.82 that means after right issue, if you are working in total, company is again going to have 84 million shares and the total value will be 182 plus 25.48, 207.48. So 207.48 is the total value for 84 million shares. You can divide them to get TERP, 207.48 million divided by 84 million still you will get 2.47 so whatever way will you like you can do it the concept is we just need to see shares before right issue and their worth and share issued in right issue and their worth so you get in total Shares after right issue and worth, you divide it to get term. Okay, so term is 2.47. Don't copy, let me complete it, then you will copy. So, the good thing in this question was finding the ratio of 1 is to 5. That company has 70 million shares, and in right issue, it's issuing 14 million shares, so 1 for 5. So, before right issue, it had 14, uh, 5 shares at 2.6 per share, 30. During right issue, on 5 shares, it issued 1 share at 1.82 so after right issue there were six shares in total 14.82 divided to get terp once you get terp the second requirement of the question is value of right per existing share let me do this as well then you can copy and your four marks would be secured second requirement is value of right per existing share Now, how do we get value of right per existing share? To get value of right per existing share, we first need 
value of right per new share. Now, value of right per new share is simply the difference of TERP 2.47 minus the price of right issue 1.82. Value of right per new share is simply the difference of TERP 2.47 and the price of right issue. This is called value of right per new share. Difference of TERP and right issue price. This is value of right per new share. And to get value of right per existing share, we simply divide the value of right per new share, 0.65, by the existing number of shares that are five. So to get value of right per existing share, simply we take value of right per new share upon existing shares. So value of right per new share <coughs> is important if you need to compute value of right per existing share. Value of right per new share is TERP and right issue price per share difference. And for existing share is value of right per new share divided by existing shares. Therefore, remember, if question directly asks you this value of right per existing share, as per the formula, you first need value of right per new share. To get value of right per new share, you need to have term. So all these things need to be computed. Okay. Please note if you have any questions, you can ask. Uh, Sana, had this been OTC, it would have options. Uh, I've clearly shared you the file as well as shown the question on the screen. It's a long question. But here we didn't get 1.82. It's written in the question that right issue is at 30% discount to the current share price of 2.6 per share. What does this mean? That right issue is 30% less than the current price of 2.6 per share. This becomes 1.82. <coughs> I will repeat the 1 for 5 ratio again. Don't worry. Just copy it. Emma Dayat, 14 million came that 25.48 million needs to be raised. And we are issuing shares at 1.82. And 1 for 5 ratio, uh, Amir and Maam, I will just explain. Just copy it. Uh, Nabil and uh, Sanola, you are asking the formula of value of right per exit share. It's clearly written uh, right next to 0 
uh, Assam, there is no linkage in third formula. So now like existing shares are five because 0 0.65 is per share. So you need to divide with individual shares. <laughs> Hamza, I cannot uh, comment on this that uh, whether a question will be <laughs> repeating or not. <laughs> Uh, Sana, rather than uh, typing such questions, it's better you share that question. You have my WhatsApp number, then I will see. Uh, Mir, I'm sorry, these sessions are not for exam questions, prediction that uh, how much uh, percentage chances, chances are that this will come or not. And uh, the other student, Hamza, whether the question will be repeated or not, these are not the sessions of question guessing. So I'm so sorry, I cannot comment on this. Uh, no, Faisal, thank you, but uh, we have to do it today. Okay, so basically, uh, there were some students who joined late and they missed a particular portion. That's why for them to understand the latter part of the question as well, I need to repeat it quickly. Now, please pay attention. The question is, La Forge is a listed company which designs and manufactures. La Forge is a listed company which designs and manufactures air conditioning units, which are then sold through third party retailers. Okay. It's a listed company which designs and manufactures air conditioning units, which are then sold to third party retailers and distributors. Economic growth in a number of Asian countries has increased the demand for its products. La Forge wishes to target these markets in order to generate sales. To target these markets, La Forge needs new machinery, which will require investment of 25.48 million. So to target these markets, La Forge needs new machinery, which requires investment of 25.48 million. Two options for raising financial run. A right issue at a discount of 30% of the current share price of 2.6 per share. Now remember, company needs 25.48 million investment. Two options are a right issue at 30% discount of the current share price of 2.6. Now, if right issue is being made at 30% discount of the current share price of 2.6, that means right issue is at 1.82 per share. If right issue at a 30% discount of the current share price of 2.6, that means it's 30% less, 1.82 per share. Here it is a very key thing that if company plans to raise 25.48 million, company plans to raise 25.48 million and will it will issue right issue, shares issue at 30% less to the current share price, that's 1.82. So if you are planning to raise 25.48 million and you will issue shares at 1.82, if you are planning to raise 25.48 million and you will issue shares at 1.82, that means Okay, because 25.48 million is uh, <coughs> the amount you need to raise and you will issue shares at 1.82. That means 14 million shares will be issued. The other option is issue of 6% loan notes redeemable at nominal value of 100. Laforge's P ratio is 11 times. This is expected to remain unchanged. Extracts from Laforge's most recent financial statements are profit is 25.5 million, PAT 16.56, share capital is 0.5 per share, nominal 35 million. Here I wrote, if share capital is 35 million, nominal value is 0.5, company currently has 70 million shares. Okay, if share capital is 35 million and par value is 0 0.5, that means company has 70 million shares. Company has 70 million shares. And it's planning to issue 14 million new shares. Okay, company has uh, 70 million shares and it plans to issue 14 million new shares. If you have 70 million shares and you plan to issue 14 million new shares, from here I get one for five. Like if company had 40 million shares and it planned to issue 10 million shares. So this makes one for four. So if company has 
70 million shares and it is issuing 14 million shares it's one for five now the requirement is term so how do you find term check before right issue it's one for five <coughs> so before right issue company will have five shares price is 2.6 before right issue so 13 and in right issue one share was issued at 1.82 per share 1.82 so after right issue company had six shares in total combined worth 14.82 you can divide it to get term 2.47 you can also do it in total. No need for one for five. Before ride issue, 70 million shares at 2.6 per share, 182 million. During ride issue, 14 million shares issued at 1.8 25.48 million. You can add combined worth is 84 million shares to 07.48. Again, divide to get 2.47. Okay, this is term. How do you get value of right per existing share? The formula of value of right per existing share is value of right per new share over existing shares. So you firstly need value of right per new share. Value of right per new share is the difference of TERP and right issue price. So you can open the self. <coughs> TERP is 2.47. Right issue price is 1.82. I took the difference to get value of right per new share, 0.65. And value of right per existing share is value of right per new share, 0.65 over existing shares, 5. Okay. I hope it's clear now. Now let's move to the next requirement. Next requirement is assuming that the investment goes ahead. Assuming that the investment goes ahead, that means for this part, assume investment of 25.48 million goes ahead. Because for this part, it's clearly mentioning that assume investment goes ahead. You are going with the investment. Calculate LaForge's forecast earning per share for the coming year and resulting share price if it finances the investment using each of these alternatives right issue download issue remember to make the investment of 25.48 million remember to make the investment of 25.48 million company had two options to make the investment of 25.48 million company had two options right issue loan note issue <coughs> so this part states assume investment goes ahead assume we have done 25.48 million investment now you need to calculate two things laforge's eps for the coming year if the investment goes ahead 25.48 million you invest and resulting share price if finances the investment using right issue and note Let's suppose <laughs> let's suppose investment is financed by right issue. <laughs> Let's suppose this 25.48 million investment is financed by right issue. <laughs> you are required to calculate forecast EPS for the coming year.
and resulting share price. <laughs> These are the two requirements. I have not uh, discussed the loan note portion yet. I've just assumed that uh, investment is financed by right issue. I need to calculate forecast EPS for the coming year and resulting share price. Now you all know the formula of EPS is PAT minus preference dividend. Okay. divided by number of ordinary shares. This is the formula of PAT, EPS, forecast EPS for the coming year. PAT less preference dividend from number of ordinary shares. That means to find EPS, we need three things for the coming year. PAT for the coming year, preference dividend for the coming year, and number of ordinary shares for the coming year we are assuming in this part that investment is financed by right issue i need forecast eps for the coming year the formalized path less preference divided over number of ordinary shares and resulting share price for the coming year now in order to find the eps for the coming year the formula of eps is path less preference divided over number of ordinary shares that means i need three things to find the path for uh, eps for the coming year Pat for the coming year, preference dividend, number of order shares. Now, a few things are very easy. If investment is financed by right issue, what will be the number of ordinary shares for the coming year? What will be the number of ordinary shares for the coming year? If investment is financed by right issue, the number of ordinary shares for the coming year will be how much shares company currently has? Remember, 35 million capital, 0.5 par value. Company currently has 70 million shares plus. Remember, investment is financed by right issue. So in right issue, you are planning to issue 14 million new shares. 25.48 million will be raised at 1.82. So you are planning to issue 14 million new shares. So as far as for the coming year investment by right issue is concerned, if investment is financed by right issue, for the coming year, the number of ordinary shares you are going to have is 84 million. The number of shares you are going to have is 84 million. Okay, because this investment is financed by right issue. So for the next year, the number of ordinary shares will be 70 million uh, current and 14 million new shares will be issued. What will be the preference dividend for the coming year zero? Because there are no preference shares on the balance sheet. You can see the balance sheet. There are no preference shares. So no preference shares means no preference dividend. What would be the path for the coming year? The current year's PAT is 16.56, but you are calculating forecast EPS for the coming year. If investment goes ahead, now it's clearly written that if investment is undertaken, the forecast profit from operations is expected to increase by 4.5 million. So for the next year, what would be your PAT? Next year, your PAT will be 16.56 million this year's bat. 16.56 million this year's bat. And because you are doing new investment, because you are doing new investment, 25.48 million is in the investment. So for the coming year, your profit would increase by 4.5 million. Your profit would increase by 4.5 million, but you need to pack. So your profit increases by 4.5 million on that increased profit of 4.5 million. You have to pay 20% tax. So the net benefit you will get is just 80% of 4.5 million. Getting this? 
because 16.56 million is the path for the coming year. Next year, profit will increase by 4.5. But keep this thing in mind. If your profit increases by 4.5 million, you have to pay 20% tax as well on that 4.5 million. So net impact you would only get is 80%. Uh, okay. So 16.56 plus 4.5 into 0 0.8. This will make 20.16 million. Okay. Now you can get EPS easily. But 20.16 less preference dividend zero divided by number of ordinary shares that's 84 million so eps is going to be 0 0.24 for the next year eps is going to be 0 0.24 for next year you have no problems in preference dividend for the coming year everything we need for the coming year preference dividend zero number of ordinary shares increased by 14 million and pat increased by 4.5 due to investment but only 80 percent of that resulting share price resulting share price you will get share price can only be calculated in f9 through the formula of p ratio share price can only be calculated in f9 through the formula of p ratio the formula of p ratio is market price per share over earnings per share okay the formula of p ratio for the coming year share price is always computed through p ratio market price per share or earning per share now as far as p ratio is concerned it will remain constant 11 times okay you need market price per share for the coming year put it x over earnings per share for the coming year for the coming year p ratio will remain constant market price per share needs to be found what is the earnings per share for the coming year 0 0.24 already found so take 0 0.24 there the market price per share is gonna be 2.64 this ends if investment is financed by right issue you get eps for the coming year and share price okay please copy any questions you can ask Shahab, existing shares are 70 million. Who said it's 5 million? So, Noman, if you want to take the long route, you can. That first, you need to increase profits from operations. Okay. Then you need to. <coughs> take uh, tax working separately and then get PAT. I think you should save time. Uh, Shahab, even for previous part, there was no five or six. It was 70 million uh, current shares and company was issuing 14 million shares. Assam, I will just do it. Wait, please. So, Sana, you are not asked the current share price. Uh, you are asked the share price for the coming year. 
Amna and Noman, you both are doing the same mistake. So let me just uh, solve it through your method so that you get clarity. Please wait a minute. <laughs> I have given both of you the easy form, but uh, you are making your life difficult by doing the other form. So we will solve through your format as well. Don't worry. <laughs> yes, you will always use P ratio. Because uh, Maham, this is increasing profit by 4.5. So obviously when profit increase, you have to pay 20% tax as well. <laughs> Okay, now I try to make uh, life very easy in these calculations. <coughs> that uh, you need forecast EPS for the coming year. So this is the formula of EPS, right? Pat less preference dividend over number of ordinary shares. That means you need Pat for the coming year. You need preference dividend for the coming year and you need number of ordinary shares, okay? So for the next year, number of ordinary shares are 70, increasing by 14 million due to investment, 84 million. Next year, preference dividend zero because no preference shares. Next year, PAT. So PAT current year is 16.56. It says due to investment, it's increasing by 4.5. So increase by 4.5. But on that increase 4.5, you have to pay 20% tax. Okay. So either you can do it like this, 16.56 plus 4.5 PAT increase. But minus on this 4.5, you have to pay 20% tax, 0.9. So net will be 20.16. Okay, but there are some students who want to enter into technical comp computations. <coughs> However, my job is to uh, clarify them as well. Therefore, I am doing and they want to take a long route. They are on the word that without the new investment, please pay attention. The forecast profit from operations is expected to be same as previous year. If the investment is undertaken, the forecast profit from operations for coming year is expected to increase by 4.5. They are on the word that if the investment is undertaken, the forecast profit from operations. Profit from operations. This profit from operations. It will increase by 4.5. 
Now, they don't get into depth. They just uh, take the raw data and do things uh, on their own. Okay, so please pay attention. Now, if you see, the others, they should follow my strategy. If you see, the profit from operations was 25.5 million and the profit after tax was 16.56 million. Right? This was the data given. Profit from operations 25.5 and 16.56 was PAT. Now please pay attention. Profit from operations is 25.5. You know profit from operations, we deduct costs and get PAT. Tax rate is 20%. So if you pay 20% tax on 25.5 million, so you get 25.5 million profit and 20% tax, 5.51 million. So 25.5 less 5.1, this doesn't give you PAT of 16.56. Okay, 25.5 million was profit. Tax is 20% as quoted by the question. 20% is 5.1 million. So 25.5 less 5.1, it doesn't give you 16.56. That means there are definitely some other costs as well, which neither I know, neither you know, neither examiner knows because he hasn't mentioned. But taking into thing the common sense, 25.5 million is the profit. 20% is the tax, that's 5.1. So if you deduct, it never produces 16.56. So to read 16.56, that's PAT which is given. There are some other costs as well. So how much are the other costs? 25.5 minus 5.1 20.4 but you are saying that PAT is 16.5 that means there are some hidden other costs as well that is 3.84 so this is the normal profit and loss statement which is given in the question it was hidden it just says profit from operations was 25.5 and 16.56 was PAT so that means there are some mid costs. One is tax 20%, that's 5.1. Differential is some other cost. Now, due to this investment, please pay attention. Due to this investment, it's saying that profit from operations increases by 4.5 million. So if due to this investment, the profit from operations increases by 25.5 million, increases by 4.5 million, this figure should become 30. Okay. Because of this investment, the profit from operations increased by 4.5. So this figure 25.5 should become 30 for the coming year. On this 30, you will pay 20% tax. On 30, if you pay 20% tax, it's 6. Okay. And is there any information about increase in other costs? No. There is no information about increase in other costs, so they are likely to remain same. Check now. So I try to make your life easy. But uh, there are students who, this is not something uh, criticizing anyone, but this is a general problem with some students. They make life difficult, life difficult from themselves. So better, I have told you a very easy shortcut that 16.56 million is the PAT. You need PAT for APS. You don't need all of this. You need only PAT. So PAT will increase by 4.5 due to increase in profits, but 20% impact will be gone due to tax. So 20.16 will remain. However, those who want to do a very long route, they can use that, okay? So I think Noman and Amna, both uh, of you are now uh, cleared.
Manur, if profit increases by 4.5 million, you have to pay 20% tax on that. So either take 4.5 million directly, 80%, 3.6, or do separately. That 4.5 million profit increase, then 20% of 4.5 million, 0 0.9 million is the tax, then we reach 3.6 million. So it's uh, your choice. <laughs> Okay, now you have to assume investment goes ahead, calculate forecast EPS and coming year and share price if finances the investment using loan notes. So now we need to discuss this point that we need to again calculate forecast EPS and share price if investment is financed through loan notes. <laughs> Again, we will do it uh, in an easy manner. If investment is financed by uh, 6% loan note issue, we again need to calculate forecast EPS and forecast share price. Okay, if investment is financed by 6% loan notes, we again need to calculate forecast EPS for the coming year and forecast share price for the coming year. Now, if investment is financed by 6% loan note issue, 25.48 million is the investment. If it is financed by 6% loan note issue, forecast EPS for the coming year. Now, for EPS, again, you need three things. Fact, preference dividend, number of, ordinary shares right for eps we need three things bad less preference dividend number of ordinary shares we need three things bad preference dividend number of ordinary shares you will get eps and through eps you will get the share price okay number of ordinary shares currently company has 70 million shares this year company has 70 million shares this year it plans to make an investment of 25.48 million and plans to raise finance via loan note issue. Do you think this will increase the number of shares next year? No. So next year's shares will be 70 million. If you're raising via right issue, then shares increase. If you're raising via loan note issue, it doesn't increase here. Same. No preference shares have been issued, no preference shares are present, so preference dividend zero. Okay. Now that. There are two jobs, easy job and difficult job. Currently, PAD is 16.56. If you invest 25.48 million, if you invest uh, 25.48 million, okay, even while loan note issue, this will increase your profit by 4.5 million. This will increase your profit by 4.5 million. But on this increased profit, you have to pay increased tax of 20%. So the net benefit you will get is 0 0.8. Right? On the 16.56, if you invest 25.48 million, profit will increase by 4.5. But you will only get 80% advantage because 20% is gone in taxes. Okay? Your profit will increase. But now you have raised finance by a loan note issue. 
so your profit will fall also because you have to pay interest because you have to pay interest so what is the interest interest is six percent <laughs> Interest is six percent. Of what the amount financed? Twenty five point four eight million. So interest is six percent of twenty five point four eight million. 1.5288 million is the interest. 1.5288 million is the interest. Right? So your profit will increase by 4.5. Okay? Well, let's make life more easy for you. Your PAT is 16.656 million for the current year. You need forecast EPS for the coming year, so PAT for the coming year. So coming year, your PAT is 16.56. If you invest 25.48 million in this project while loan note issue, your PAT will increase by 4.5, but you have to pay interest also of 1.5 to double it. So if you say your profit increases by 4.5, but obviously in right issue, you get this whole profit, only the tax needs to be paid. But now when your profit increased by 4.5 billion, you have to bear an interest cost of 1.5288 million. So now your net profit is only going to increase by 2.9712 million. In the previous case, in 16.56 million, I added 4.5. Why? Because my profit was increasing and I don't have to pay any interest costs. But now, since it's a loan note issue, my profit will increase by 4.5, but I have to pay 1.5 to double it interest. So my profit will only increase by 2.9712. But if my profit will increase by 2.9712, I have to pay additional tax as well of 20%. So I won't get advantage of the full profit. I will only get advantage of 80%. Okay, so this will make 16.56 plus 2.9712, 0 0.8, 18.93 million. Okay, now you will get EPS easily. That is 18.9369. Less preference dividend, zero. Okay. And number of ordinary shares, it's 70.27. And you can get the share price through P ratio. P ratio remains static at 11 times. You need market price per share. And EPS is 0 0.2705. You will simply get market price per share as 11 into 2.9757. Okay, please copy it. Any question you can ask? It's the same thing, but in that, I only increase profit by 4.5. But here I increase profit by 4.5, but I also deduct interest cost. So profit only increased by 2.97, and no matter whatever profit increase, we only get 80% share. So Amna, that's why I completely opened the description in. If you are doing 16.56 <laughs> plus 4.5 and directly.
taking 80% you are doing wrong because 16.56 is already after tax the tax has already been deducted so you're again multiplying it at point eight. that's wrong always you multiply with 100 power if you need to get interest of one bond here you need total interest Sun, I think you need to see the working what I have done and what you are saying you are doing completely different than I am doing. You are taking 20.16, that means increase by 4.5, deducting 1.5 to double it. Where is the tax impact on this 4.5 and 1.5 to double it? I'm not because loan note issue doesn't increase the number of shares. Loan note issue means you are issuing loans. How will it increase the number of shares? Emma, that I've written interest on loan notes. It's six percent of the amount raised. If you raise one million from a bank and six percent interest, you just need to multiply it. That's what we are doing. Arslan, your calculation is wrong. Simply marks will be deducted. Ahmed, this is the interest, what you're asking. How is interest calculated? This is the interest portion. How do you get interest? The amount finance multiplied by rate of interest. Thank <laughs> you. 
So tax impact again you are doing wrong. We have only taken the tax impact on profits Interest also reduces profit and reduces tax. Where is that impact? Therefore again, I have told you an easier way and you are doing a difficult way Because you earn profits you have to pay tax but when interest comes it reduces profits and reduces tax as well That impact is missing in your calculations So basically if you talk about uh, the previous right issue case 16.56 million was the profit okay 4.5 million additional profit but you only get 80 percent share of that profit because 20 percent is gone in taxes okay so this was 20.16 million the new pat but here 16.56 million was your profit now your profit increased by 4.5 but recognize this thing that if profit increased by 4.5 now you have taken loan so you have to pay interest of 1.5 to double it as well so now your profit is only going to increase by 2.9712 million and of this increased profit you are not going to get the whole share 20 percent will be taken away by taxation authorities you will only get 80 percent so this is 18.93 <laughs> Now, part C of this question, discuss ways in which a company can issue new equity shares. You need to discuss ways <coughs> in which company can issue new equity shares. What are the ways of issuing new equity shares? What are the ways of issuing new equity shares? This is a straightforward Kaplan textbook or BPP textbook requirement. Ways in which a company can issue new equity shares. How do you issue new equity shares? now what are the methods of issuing new equity shares there are four commonly used methods one is called right issue if you can see on the screen one is called right issue this is a method of issuing new equity shares what is the right issue explain it briefly that right issue involves issuing shares to existing shareholders in proportion to their existing holding they are often successful easier to price and are cheaper to arrange i think that would be it for a mark people generally believe that examiner answers are too long obviously he is the examiner in any paper not i am talking only about financial management of in any paper you can never ever write the same answer as the examiner answer because that's not your level so key points to the point they give you marks one mark per point would be enough so method of issuing new equity shares one is a right issue through right issue you can issue new equity shares and after giving heading of right issue you can just mention this that right, right what is right issue involves issuing shares to existing shareholders are successful easier to price etc another way of issuing new equity shares is private placing what is placing placing is simply when shares are not issued to individual investors but they are issued to institutions they are issued to institution this is placing either you issue shares to investors or institutions your equity shares increase in the market so placing is also a thing third is the public offer this is the way of issuing new equity shares what is a public offer company can go to general public if it's listed and offer them shares this is another way of issuing new equity shares and fourth is initial public offering ipo ipo and public offering are the same thing but public offer is used by those companies who are already listed and what differentiates it is initial public offering is when the company is getting listed for the first time they can issue their shares and increase the number of equity shares people say there are more methods of issuing new equity shares one method is called bonus issue 
obviously through bonus issue you don't get cash you don't get cash but new equity shares are issued so to increase new equity shares bonus issue can also be done scrap issue paying shares instead of cash as dividend this is called scrap issue again a part of your financial management that you issue shares rather than cash as dividend so if you issue shares as dividend again your equity shares increase so there are multiple ways in which a company can issue new equity shares write the names explain in one one and a half two lines that what is that and you get one mark per point five marks get you five points okay Amir script issue is usually used at the time of dividends and bonus issue can be done anytime. And Ahmed, yes, it remains same, but this is not asked here that whether right issue is increasing the value or not. It's just stating how can you issue new equity shares? Can be via public offering, can be via right issue, can be via uh, bonus issue or script issue. IPO is initial public offering. You go to public and offer shares for the first time and uh, placing is when you don't sh issue shares to individuals you issue shares to financial institutions companies so when shares are issued to companies they increase your equity obviously you have issued shares so it increases equity this is called placing No man, if company will buy back equity shares, this will reduce equity. It is saying, how will you increase equity? Uh, Javad, uh, your view is right that uh, examiner wordings are technical and tutor wordings are easier. That's why people take classes from tutors because if they understand everything just from examiner answers, they don't need to take classes. But uh, reading examiner answers, even they are detailed technical, uh, you see it enhances your knowledge and you can uh, remember some points and uh, get them in the exam. So they obviously help you in getting some key points. Uh, they don't help you at all in learning or rote learning stuff, but they help you in getting, getting the key points. Last part. At a recent board meeting to discuss the financing options, one of the directors suggested reducing the forthcoming dividend in the past few years. La Forge has consistently paid an annual dividend of 0.08 per share. Its shareholders include both financial institutions and individuals. Remember in the last class also, the company is planning to raise 25.48 million right what are the two options it is considering one right issue and one loan issue okay the company is planning to raise 25.8 million for 8 million and it's said in the opening paragraph that either it is considering a right issue or a loan issue both right issue and loan issue are external sources of finance at a recent board meeting to discuss the financing options one of the directors suggested reducing dividend there are some directors like in the previous question of the last class as well there were director a director b directors some directors suggest no need to go to external sources of finance like right issue loan or issue reduce the dividend if you reduce the dividend, cash gets saved and you can invest money. La Forge has consistently paid an annual dividend of 0, 0.08 per share. Shareholders include both financial institutions and individuals. <coughs> Discuss and recommend whether La Forge should raise the finance. How much finance it needs? 
discuss and recommend whether La4j should raise the finance it requires by reducing annual dividend. Okay, so La4j is needing with the 25.48 million. And one of the directors is saying, don't go for right issue or loan issue, reduce dividend. So discuss and recommend whether La4j should raise the finance it requires by reducing dividend. How much dividend company is paying? 0 0.0 per share. And you know company has 70 million shares. So even if you reduce dividend, you will only get 5.6 million which is way less than required of 25.8 million. You see, that is saying discuss and recommend whether La4j should raise the finance by reducing dividend. You need to discuss and recommend whether La4j should raise finance by reducing dividend. So even if we recommend this option, not okay. Uh, raise the finance by reducing dividend if you even reduce your dividend of 0 0.08 per share you have 70 million shares you will just get 5.6 way less than 25.48 so won't be that beneficial similarly last class we again dividend has a signaling effect <laughs> when dividend is reduced it is a signal for investors that company may be in problem so creates a bad image <laughs> some shareholders who won dividend will now sell shares and move to other company which may result in fall in share price. Up till now, we have given them three solid reasons that uh, how this proposal will affect less amount signaling problem. They may switch to other companies. Okay. So it is recommended that company does not go for this option okay what it can do is is to reduce dividend in small steps not 0 0.08 but in small steps or offer script dividend that their shares are offered as dividend, so investors won't be worried too much, but completely removing it will be worrisome. If you elaborate the four paragraphs a bit of lot, you can definitely secure five to six marks for you. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> 
So you can just copy all this stuff. In the meantime, we will go for a break. Okay. And after the break, we will resume with the second examination question. Okay.
Okay, we are resuming now. Uh, first, let me see which questions we have. Okay, then since uh, you are issuing loan notes now, so loan notes don't increase the number of shares, right? Uh, right issue increases the number of shares, that's why I've increased, but loan notes doesn't increase it, okay? Okay, now we will be moving towards uh, the next question of uh, social of finance, which we have to do in today's class. And this is uh, the next question spine company okay This question is from September 2020 exam, September, December 2020. Okay, you can read the question from uh, there as well, uh, the handout file which I've shared, and you can also uh, deal it from uh, this uh, screen. Uh, Ali, you don't have prediction of the complete paper, right? So it's only mentioned that one is uh, from business valuation, one is from risk. There is no mentioning of the third one, so we can't tell you, it can be from anywhere, okay? Okay, this scenario relates to three requirements. Spine company is looking to spend 15 million to expand its business. Okay, it's planning to spend 15 million to expand its business. The expansion is expected to increase PBIT by 20%. Recent financial information relating to spine can be summarized as follows. The PBIT is 13040, interest is 240. So you deducted it to get PBT 12800, taxation is 3840, PAT is 8960. Spine is not sure whether to finance the expansion with debt or equity. Again, company is planning either debt or equity. If debt is chosen, the company will issue 15 million 8% loan notes at their nominal value of 100. If equity is chosen, the company will have 144 right issue at a 20% discount to the current market price of 6.25 per share. Spine has 12 million shares in issue. It currently has 12 million shares in issue. It pays tax at 30%. Okay, so 10 marks evaluate on financial grounds whether spine should finance the expansion with debt or equity, whether it should do it for debt or equity. Okay. Reading the question from here now to mark the things as well.
Spine is looking to spend 15 million. Okay, company is planning to spend 15 million to expand business. The expansion is expected to increase PBIT, profit before interest and tax, by 20%. This figure, PBIT, it will increase by 20%. Recent information is as follows PBIT 13040, interest 240, deducted it to get 1800, taxes 3840, PAT is 8960. Spine is not sure whether to expand the finance, whether to finance the expansion with debt or equity. If debt is chosen, 15 million is needed, 8% loan notes at par value of 100, equity 144 right issue, 20% discount to the current price of 6.25. So if you check again, 20% discount to the current share price of 6.25. So 20% discount. to the current share price of uh, 6.25. This will make it five. So right issue will be made at dollar five. Because it's 20% discount to the current share price of 6.25, that means a 5. Spine has 12 million shares, tax rate is 30%. Evaluate on financial grounds whether Spine should finance the expansion with debt or equity. Let's just uh, draw the summary of the question first. <laughs> I'm copying the information from the scenario first. The next question is uh, Spine company. Okay, so this is the current situation of the company that uh, PBIT was uh, one three zero four zero. The interest was 240. Okay, so deducting it, we got uh, <coughs> 12,800 as PBT. Then you pay taxation. What is the tax rate? 30%. So paying 30% of uh, 12800. It's 3840. And then PAT after deducting them is 8960. This is the current position of the company, which I have copied from the question. Okay. So current position is as follows, which uh, is PBIT is 13040, interest is 240, PA, P, PBT, then tax, and then <coughs> PAT. Now, if you look at the scenario, Spine was planning to raise 15 million to expand, and expansion will increase PBIT by 20%. Remember this figure, PBIT. This is increasing by 20%. And financial information is given. The only problem is company is unsure between debt or equity. If debt is chosen, 15 million loan notes, 8%. Equity is chosen, 144 right issue, 20% discount to share price of 6.25, that means 5. Company is 12 million shares. 
tax rate 30%. Evaluate on financial grounds whether spine should go for debt or equity. Very easy question. Whether it should go for debt or equity, just check some ratios to decide whether it should go for debt or equity. And to check some ratios, whether it should go for debt or equity, to calculate ratios, you need to have a PNL having debt option and PNL having equity option. This is also part of financial management syllabus. And students who have taken classes from us, this is taught. Okay, that uh, whether on financial grounds, fine should go with debt or equity, you need to find some ratios of debt or equity to comment. And to find ratios, you must have a PNL having debt and PNL having equity. Let's start. If company goes for dollar fifteen million via eight percent loan notes, if company goes for fifteen million via eight percent loan notes. Find some ratios to decide whether it should go for loan notes or equity. But to find the ratios, you must have information of updated PNL that what will happen if company goes for 8% loan notes or equity. Now, if company goes for 15 million via 8% loan notes, what will happen to PBIT? It's clearly mentioned in the question that uh, if you spend 15 million, the expansion will increase PBIT by 20%. So my PBIT will not be 13040. It will increase by 20%. So increase it by 20%. This will become 15. Six four eight one three zero four zero increasing by twenty percent. This makes it one five six four eight. Obviously, finance cost and plus cost will also increase. Currently, it's two forty. Currently, it's two forty. Obviously, you are not paying off any debt that it reduces. If you are paying off debt, then it will reduce. But what you are doing? you are going for 15 million via 8% further debt. So obviously, if you go for 15 million or 15,000 via 8% debt, your interest will increase. How much? 8% of 15 million or 15,000. This is your interest cost increase. One double four zero interest will increase by twelve hundred. Obviously, you are raising one thousand fifteen thousand fifteen million via eight percent, so twelve hundred interest will increase will become one double four zero. So if you deduct it, you get PBT one five six four eight minus one double four zero one four two zero eight. Then you have to pay thirty percent tax on it. And you get PAT earnings one four two zero eight minus four two six two point four. This is the updated PNL if you go for debt. Okay, you can note it, and if you have any questions, you can please ask.
uh, I haven't mentioned any of the questions, Syanat. Uh, it's just uh, I have increased the profit of uh, who's working. I've shown on the right side. Then the interest cost I've just added, and then to get the PBT, I minused it, and then tax thirty percent, and then PAT. I haven't connected any of the cell for ease. <sighs> <laughs> finance charge was 240 at the moment and uh, obviously when you are taking 15 million via 8 percent loan notes so i mentioned the equation above via handwriting that this will increase finance cost by 1200 so 240 plus 1200 makes it 1400 Okay, it was uh, evaluate whether company should go for debt or equity. Evaluate whether spine should finance with debt or equity. So obviously I need to calculate some ratios uh, to reach a conclusion. But before that, uh, to find the ratios, I need uh, the updated profit and loss statement. Okay, so if finance is raised by 15 million loan notes, 8%, I have made the updated PNL. Now let's see if company goes for right issue. Okay, so if company goes uh, via right issue, it's very easy. What will be the position? The PBIT, which currently stands at 13040, since you are investing 15 million via uh, equity now, but investing 15 million, so profit will increase by 20%, 15648. But do you think now, if you are raising 15 million via right issue, 
your finance cost or interest cost has to increase obviously no interest cost won't increase because uh, you have not taken via loan notes so this will remain at 240 so your pbt would be <coughs> 15408 and tax will be 30 percent So your PAT is going to be one zero seven eight five point six. This is if we raise finance via right issue. So whether it should go for debt or equity, you have one point now that uh, equity option is resulting in more profit compared to that option. Copy it, then I will calculate the further ratios. Zabaloch, actually, I'm not feeling well. And uh, if you want to hear my sneezing in between the lectures, I should open the mic. Okay, now we have done some calculations, but we are unable to answer that point at the moment that uh, we have not answered it yet. Sorry, that uh, evaluate whether it should go for debt or equity, whether it should go for debt or 
equity. Irshad, you seem to be in a lot of hurry, and I've told this thing multiple times that I'm not teaching one single student. Obviously, there are questions of students as well, questions on WhatsApp as well, and uh, I have to answer everyone. And uh, there are not only fast learners in these classes, there are some slow learners as well. So if you are taking class in a group, I think you should uh, uh, follow the pace which everyone goes. Uh, you keep on messaging and instructing, move to this part, please increase the speed, please, oh, this is not good. So you are in a group class, so better follow what everyone's pace is doing. Else you can always have the recordings later, don't attend these live classes in recordings, you can forward as per your own pace, but uh, in live classes, this can't happen. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> So now, the thing is that we have not yet reached that conclusion that uh, whether we should go for uh, debt or equity. But uh, obviously, uh, everyone has this thing in mind that uh, to enable us to reach a conclusion whether we should go for debt or equity, we need to have some, have some ratios. And for ratios, we need to have uh, updated data. So we have made the updated data going via loan notes and going via right issue. Okay. Now remember one thing. We will compute some ratios to decide whether it should go for debt or equity. Okay. But there is no formal rule which ratios you should compute because examiner hasn't mentioned this. Sometimes examiner says using financial gearing and EPS decide we should uh, go for what option. So you have to compute those ratios or calculate share price to decide which one should opt. Since examiner hasn't mentioned any ratio, so you can compute ratios as per your choice. Maybe you will compute some other ratios apart from mine, but we will compute some ratios and decide whether it should go for loan notes or right issue. But uh, whatever ratios we compute, since we have profits, I think we should compute EPS definitely. Okay, we should compute EPS definitely. Okay, if you look at the current data, how will you calculate the current uh, EPS? It's PAT. What is the PAT? See in current data, the PAT is 8960. Okay. Less preference dividend. What is the preference dividend currently? Zero. Divided by number of ordinary shares. It's clearly mentioned company has 12 million shares. So since we are working in thousands, 12,000 shares. This is the current EPS. Okay. If you go for debt option, check the EPS of debt option. What is the PAT of debt option? 9945.6. Reference dividend zero. Number of ordinary shares. Does debt option increase the number of ordinary shares? No. So number of ordinary shares will still stand at 12 million, 12,000. 0.8288. Okay. But EPS under equity option. What is the PAT under equity option? 10785.6. Minus preference dividend zero. Divided by number of ordinary shares. Equity increases number of ordinary shares. You have 12,000 shares. You have 12,000 shares. And it's a 144 right issue. Okay, that means you will be issuing 3,000 more shares, right? Because company has 12,000 shares and 144 right issue means company will be in, in, uh, in issuing 3,000 more shares. So now after equity option, the PAT is 10785, preference within zero, number of ordinary shares are 15,000. 0.71. So as you can see, you have a point here that since that option 
is offering high EPS, it shall be preferred. Obviously, other ratios may give some different conclusion, but whatever ratios you are computing, you need to state the conclusion according to that. So since that option is offering a higher EPS than equity option, this ratio suggests that the company should go for that option. Or you can check the share price. Okay. So in the question, the current share price is 6.25. Okay, how to get the share price after that option? I have told you that share price will always be computed through the formula of PE ratio. That is market price per share over earning per share. If you check your current PE ratio, so current market price per share is 6.25 and current eps i have just calculated it's 0 0.7466 so current market price per share is 6.25 and current eps i have just calculated 0.7466 okay so current p ratio seems to me 6.25 over 0 0.7466. It's 8.37 times. 8.37 times. Now, if you raise finance via debt or equity, that doesn't change P ratio. That doesn't change P ratio. So if I assume in debt, that P ratio remains same 8.37. I need to find share price after debt. What is the EPS after debt? Just calculate it. 0 0.8288. This is my EPS after debt. And after that, I'm assuming P ratio remains same 8.37. So I will get the market price per share as 8.37 multiplied by 0 0.8288. 6.93. But I, if I need to find the share price after equity option, assuming share price is through P ratio formula, assuming P ratio remains same 8.37, I need market price per share. But EPS after equity option is just computed as 0 0.719. Okay, so I can get market price per share by multiplying 8.37. Zero point seven one nine six point zero one. So again, you can write again, you can write that uh, share price of debt option is better than equity. So again, this point also favors that we should go for debt. Okay, now if you need to calculate some other ratios, you can. Like people may ask to compute financial gearing, but uh, the company's uh, current debt position is not given. Therefore, debt over equity, it's difficult for me to get financial gearing. Okay, operational gearing, contribution over PBIT. So contribution information is also not given. So I think uh, many ratios computation is not possible. However, it is strongly recommended that you compute uh, as many ratios as you want and then decide even if uh, some options are giving other debt and the other options are going for equity write it okay any questions please ask yes Fazan. Many people are saying to calculate interest cover. You can calculate interest cover. I will also calculate it once you copy.
uh, then it is uh, never recommended to just take the decision on one ratio only. Obviously, at least you should get two ratios in sight. Aman, where did we include preference dividend? We never included preference dividend. Where is preference dividend in this question? Yes, Fazana, I've answered you. You have to. Uh, wait for interest cover. I will calculate it. Let people do the stuff, then we will copy.
Yes, Arslan, you can do it. Okay, we can also add one more ratio as uh, many students are saying, although I told you there is no formal rule. Current interest cover is current PBIT, 13040 divided by current interest cost, that is 240, 54.333. After that, the interest cover is PBIT, 15648 divided by interest, 1440. Okay, and after equity, it's uh, PBIT 15648 divided by interest cost that's 240 65.2 okay so obviously the higher the interest cover the better so as far as interest cover is concerned equity option looks good now there is a genuine expectation and a very invalid expectation among students that every ratio should give the same conclusion how is it possible even if you calculate uh, NPV, IRR, rows and payback of a project, is the project acceptable through all four techniques? Never. Some techniques may say this one is better. Some technique may say the other project is better. So EPS and share price are saying that is better. And interest cover is saying equity is better. So this can happen. Maybe you calculate another ratio. It will give another conclusion. So out of these three ratios, the majority are favoring that. So still our conclusion remains the same that that is better. Okay, now Aves Adamji, your question that is redeemable or irredeemable. Why do we need this question here? In PNL, we need interest. Either it's redeemable, the interest will still come 8% or 15 million, either it's a redeemable sim. What you people do is that you people try to enter into such questions which are not needed. This is not a problem for me. This is a problem for you in the exam. That uh, there was no need of this question here that why whether that is redeemable or redeemable. Frankly speaking, whatever it is, how it will affect your solution. It's not needed here. Yes, Aman, I did that. Now, Amir, your question is, that uh, only we have to conclude that it is better or we have to mention the reason as well. Why you need to mention the reason? All these calculations are reasons. We are not just stating that is better, equity is better. We have the supporting arguments. I have written the reason that share price is better. That's why we are going for debt. Interest cover is better. That's why we are going for debt. Uh, EPS is better. That's why we are going for debt. So what else reasons do you need? Obviously, if we don't perform any of these calculations and just write the statement, and it's, we all calculated all of this, these calculations are the reasons. So why are you saying that uh, whether we have to conclude or not? Because the reasons are there. No, Amir, this is not F7, dear. This is financial management. <clears throat> you don't have to apply the stuff of F7 here.
Now uh, I need to discuss uh, a very important issue with all of you. Uh, Shahab, I have already answered this question that uh, one ratio is in not enough. At least you should have two ratios. Okay, so Aman, you, you are applying the calculation wrongly, it's just PBIT over interest, it's nothing else. So maybe you are putting the incorrect values. Now I want to discuss one very important issue with you. Okay. And that issue is because of some students. Whenever a question like this comes, evaluate whether it should go for debt or equity, we computed some ratios. There are some students who say, oh, this is a 10 mark requirement. So we should write so much statements in order to gain 10 marks. It didn't ask you to comment on ratio, just said which is better. So there are some students who, want, who, who at the moment, I'm telling you, who are considering at the moment that my answer, specifically the statements after calculations, won't uh, gain enough marks. They want to put extra information, extra writing stuff, waste their time in the exam, try to impress the examiner that, okay, I have written so much. I have written 10 lines for this. I have written 15 lines for this. They want to impress the examiner. So please pay attention to this clearly. Examiner doesn't get impressed by these petty workings, by these petty tactics. This is what is built in in your mind that you have to unnecessarily prolong your answer. In fact, he hates him. He says they are wasting their time and now they're wasting my time in prolonging so long. So just to tell you, please do whatever is required. I will be opening the examiner answer in front of you. See, here is the examiner answer. Okay. He has calculated the PBT, PAT liquidated, EPS share price. He has calculated any extra thing, capital gain, which is obviously not necessary. And after all calculations, just look at his comment on findings. This is a 10 mark question, right? Just one, two, three, four, five. Financing by debt is recommended as this leads to larger capital gain. Capital gain means share price for the shareholders. This recommendation could have been made on the basis of EPS values alone as P ratios multiplier is the same. See, now what were you thinking? Prolonging answer, unnecessarily delaying. These things don't gain you marks. So please do whatever is expected and required. Don't waste your time and don't waste examiner's time. He won't get impressed by these petty tactics of unnecessarily prolonging the answer. Uh, Bahir Razad, to know the marks breakup, uh, you can always visit the ACCA website and see the marking scheme of the answers. In fact, it's mentioned here. PBIT increased 0.5 mark, interest increased, PBT increased, PAT increased 0.5, debt revised DPS, then capital gain, capital gain. Instead of capital gain, we computed share price, so we got the mark there. Increased PBT, revised DPS. It has calculated TERP as well. Instead of TERP, we calculated the interest cover. Then again, share price. Recommendation discussion, just two marks. But this thing you know, after the publishing of answers, in the examination hall, when you are going for the question, you don't know this. So people will try to prolong their answers. Don't do this, okay? Now, explain and discuss the relationship between systematic and unsystematic risk and discuss the assumptions made by capital asset pricing model. These are the two theoretical parts. We will do that to end this question.
okay so first requirement and the second requirement they will give you easy marks because they are straight are coming from the kaplan text explain and discuss the relationship between systematic risk and unsystematic risk okay so systematic risk and unsystematic risk this is coming from the topic of weighted average cost of capital systematic risk is the risk arising due to state of economy and cannot be diversified by investing in different portfolios or different sectors okay unsystematic risk is industry specific and can be diversified by investing in different sectors So explain and discuss the relationship between systematic and systematic so you must know and inform them what exactly systematic and unsystematic risk okay so this is what uh, the definition is then i will explain the relation okay so systematic risk is the risk due to state of economy it cannot be diversified unsystematic industry specific it can be diversified okay now what exactly is the concept behind both of these risks what exactly is the concept behind both of these risks the thing is that uh, there are some risks which occur due to economic conditions okay now no matter you hold a diversified portfolio invest in several different sectors obviously if economy related risks arise it will affect all sectors so you cannot eliminate those risks these are systematic risks but unsystematic risks are industry specific like a specific sector gets down cement sector gets down oil prices go down this is industry specific if you hold a diversified port portfolio like you have investments in gold oil etc you can diversify it. okay frankly speaking there is no relationship between them okay if a company invests in maybe 10 15 different portfolios gold real estate currency forex stock markets obviously its unsystematic risk will go down but it will not have any impact on systematic risk because if economy collapses everything has to go down 
right? And if a company wants to get avoided from economic risk, the systematic risk, it is frankly not possible. So you should write the definition. When you write these definitions, you will get one one mark each. And then you need to state that there is no relation between systematic and unsystematic risk. If company invests in multiple portfolios, it will be able to diversify or eliminate this unsystematic risk, but economic risk will still pertain. It won't get uh, eliminated because of that. So it is difficult to prove any relation between these two types of risks. The last requirement also is coming straight from the Kaplan and BPP text. Okay, if you have uh, gone through the text, it's, uh, I believe, a very, very easy mark scoring requirement. Discuss the assumptions made by CAPM. Assumptions or limitations are the same thing. So if you go and read the text, the limitations and assumptions of CAPM are clearly mentioned here. Assumes risk-free rate of return remains constant. It does not change in between. Assumes beta factor remains constant only assumes that company will be working for next one year you know CAPM only bases its calculations for the next year for future years it don't have anything to work for because they only focus their calculations for the next one year No transaction costs are considered. Obviously, in uh, investing any company, there are some transaction costs, some taxes. CAPM ignores. Obviously, you have seen the formula RF plus RM minus RF beta equity. The transaction cost taxes. No transaction costs or taxes are uh, coming in this particular formula. Investors hold a diversified portfolio. CAPM assumes investors have a diversified portfolio, so they are not facing any unsystematic risk. The only risk they are facing is systematic risk. CAPM cannot handle unsystematic risk. It assumes unsystematic risk is finished due to diversification, so we only have to deal with systematic risk. Okay, these are coming straight from the text. If you have gone through the text, uh, you will have uh, definitely witnessed them. So this ends this question. You can copy and ask any questions. Yes, it cannot handle systematic risk.
Okay, so I think uh, there are no further questions. So we will end it and there are one or two questions I will answer them. So now let's see if PM covers uh, systematic or unsystematic okay CAPM believes that uh, investors only hold uh, a diversified portfolio so unsystematic risk has been eliminated we have to only deal with systematic risk transaction cost is administration cost Javad. in the formula there is no administration cost Aisha you are saying hello so hi what is the question please For that, uh, you have to read the examiner answers or go through the text because we have written the key points here. Elaboration, you can see the examiner's answers or the text. Uh, Faisal, you can contact me on WhatsApp. Okay, so take care everyone. Uh, we will meet uh, in the next class.